some of the most rewarding work that I get to do uh, as a clinician is working with uh, patients who are very low functioning, people who are minimally conscious or in a vegetative state. And what's really important about these patients is uh, their level of stimulation that they receive from their environment. These patients are very low functioning in terms of sometimes all they're doing is opening their eyes and they appear to not be aware of anything in their environment. So they don't track objects in their environment, they don't look at objects in their environment, and they're not speaking or really doing much of anything other than having their vegetative functions, which are things like your heart rate and sleep-wake cycles. So very low functioning. And what we can do as uh, neurologic music therapists is completely control their sensory environment. So we have a sensory stimulation protocol that starts with very small pieces of um, stimulation. Maybe it's just your voice or just a guitar or just one singular instrument playing single notes. Then we add stimulation being chords or maybe it's a familiar song and then maybe we sing their name as a way of actually inducing arousal in these patients. And once they're aroused we can then address much more of the cognitive or deeper cognitive processes. So things like localization which is clinically very significant. Can they look to the right or to the left when something's in their environment? One patient that I had, they were saying that he wasn't aware of anything in his environment. He was uh, scaling on the coma recovery scale, somewhere between a high vegetative state and a low minimally conscious state, which is very still very low functioning. And during this coma recovery scale assessment, they were testing his ability to localize. So they would clap and yell his name from one side of the bed into the other to see if he would have some sort of reflexive response or any response at all to this stimulus in his environment. And they repeated this over and over and over again. And what they found was that he had no response to any of these auditory uh, cues. He also had no response to visual cues. So they had said that he was not aware of what was happening in his environment. During that same session that they had done this protocol with, I had the opportunity to work with him. And so I started our entrainment protocol for sensory stimu stimulation. Where I actually started uh, with a guitar and I walked to the bed and began playing at the rate at which he was breathing. As soon as I walked to his bed, he had a full body localization. So not only did his eyes and his head turn, but his entire body turned towards me immediately. He made eye contact with me, with me for about 30 seconds. About 10 minutes later, as we continued this arousal protocol and the sensory stimulation protocol, I began to sing to him. And I began to sing a very simple melody, three notes, just over and over and over again. And then I left space in music therapy, what we call an expectancy violation. So I built up this uh, rehearsed phrase, and then I stopped it in an unlikely spot. And this patient actually vocalized for one of the first times following his injury in the exact spot where musically it belonged. So he finished the phrase for me, demonstrating evidence that likely he was functioning at a much higher level cognitively than what we were previously able to, to see which I can imagine you can understand of why that would be so functionally important for his level of care.